Welcome to another BYU Sports Nation play-by-replay. Spencer Linton here with three outstanding volleyball personalities. And a theme is developing as we do these play-by-replays. You just have to beat a number one or number two ranked team, and then you get one of these shows. And that's what BYU Women's Volleyball did on August 31st, 2018. Head coach Heather Olmstead, Kennedy Eschenberg, Mary Lake, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. You You ready to dish the goodies on uh, one of the all-time wins in BYU volleyball history? (laughs) Let's do it. I'm excited. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, As I mentioned, August 31st, very early in the season, BYU with a massive top 10 showdown against Stanford. We'll go late first set. BYU up 18-17. And Kennedy, of all people, you get the kill to put the Cougars up too. I mean, how did it feel to play in this match as a very young player relatively? Yeah, it was crazy. And I think... Mary and Heather can agree, just the fans and how focused it felt. It was so fun. Coach, how would you explain your emotions going into this top 10 matchup? It was incredible. The energy in the Smithfield house that day was unbelievable. Mary with a great touch there and Heather with a good swing. And uh, it was cool to take on the number one team in the country. It was our second weekend. We'd played on the road, so we were open up with a, a tournament and got to play the number one team. Who doesn't want to do that? So... We were ready. We were almost like a well-oiled machine this weekend. It was kind of crazy. All right, I want you to watch this dig from Ronnie Jones-Perry. And, Mary, you're a defensive specialist. What was it like to have her playing defense next to you on that back line? Um, Ronnie is so awesome because she's so versatile. Like, everyone knows that she can kill a ball and is really powerful, but she also works really hard on other things. And so wherever she is, it's kind of like, oh, Ronnie's going to do her job because she's Ronnie and she works hard and... There was just a really big feeling of trust that game, and I trust everyone next to me. I trust that my hitters were going to put the ball away. I trust myself, and I would give anything to go play that <laughs> game again. Wow. 21 17, timeout. You can see there are some concerned faces in the Stanford timeout. Um, what's happening right now, knowing that you're four points away from closing out a very important first set? I mean, say what you will about my ball. You win the first set. Things just feel a lot better. Yeah, we were just super focused. You can tell Lindy right there in the huddle. They're just they're listening to every word we said. They were excited. We were playing well to start the first set. And Stanford had missed some serves, had some hitting errors, so they weren't quite settled. You could tell that, and we just felt it. But we were playing well, so we didn't care. And we just wanted to keep it rolling. The Stanford team, as we're watching a graphic on the screen right now, had four returning All-Americans, three of them first-teamers. And this is essentially an all-star team, and here you are, not just going toe to toe with them, but really making them com- uncomfortable. We had an all-star team. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you went to the final four. Yeah, we had all uh, Americans you... on our team. Just nobody thought that yet. We knew it. Sure. In, in late August, how do you not psych yourself out before a match like this? I think we just do a really good job at treating every match the exact same. So whether we were playing Stanford or was it who were we playing the day after? We played. Uh, Wichita State. Wichita, that's what I was going to say. We treat it exactly the same. And I remember right before the match, watching them warm up, I kind of had this, like, epiphany moment of, like, they're just volleyball I players. Have, I had that, And too. I think we, we might have talked about it. And the first couple of points, you started to realize, like, you like, there's all this talk about them, and they're awesome, but then it's like, this is just yeah. volleyball. Yeah, and we're all, we're all just volleyball players, and we all mess up, but we all have our strengths, and they definitely are a really strong team and are awesome, but that was yeah. the biggest realization for me. There are so many stories within the story, and I, and I love uh, a story about one of your former teammates, McKenna Miller, who we just saw a moment ago. She'd grown up playing against Catherine Plummer of Stanford and had never beaten her, not in club, not in high school, had been so frustrated. But this <laughs> night, this night was the night she finally got the best of Catherine Plummer. Yep. <laughs> Why do you smile when I say, when I say McKenna so Miller? so McKenna Miller. She's like holds on to these emotions <laughs> from like 12 years old. She's the best, and I love playing with her, but that's so funny. But I definitely, it was like a, Mac was fired up. She was ready, and anything to feel that fire is a good thing. <laughs> hey, we'll see some service errors coming up here as the score creeps to 22-19. How much of an advantage is it really to serve at altitude or to have a team that come from the coast and have to serve at altitude? Like, can you quantify that advantage? We don't, we don't talk about it. I, don't, I think volleyball is volleyball. We don't talk about if we're on the West Coast at sea level or not. It's volleyball, and uh, the dimensions are the same. So for us, we don't talk about it. That's where we play practice, so uh, we love it. We just saw Coach Hambly. Uh, what's your relationship like with Kevin? Kevin, you know, I love Kevin. He's a BYU Cougar, and we have a great relationship. I look up to him, and, you know, he was pushing to come to Provo. He knew 
the team he had, and we knew the team we had, and so we, we worked hard. He worked hard to make this match happen, and uh, he knew it. He wanted to play in that environment, and he wanted his team to be up against one of the best teams in the country, and it was just really cool to see it happen, and what a great match it ended up being, and he was super stoked. I know losing isn't always fun, but he knew it was good for his team. Not many people seek out Provo in the Smithfield house. Yeah, he was calling and texting me nonstop. <laughs> and I, I welcomed it. And, you know, I, obviously they're good every year. And so we welcomed them into the Smithfield house. He wanted to come in 18. He knew we were going to be good. He knew they were going to be good. And he needed to go on the road and challenge his team. And, you know, we returned the favor in, in, in 19. And it was great for both, both teams. You won in 18 and 19. Hey, it was a, it was <laughs> no a, it was wonder a you wanted to play. Hey, us. Kevin, when do you want to play again? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's keep it going. Okay, 24 21 here at set point. Uh, the shark in the water clap comes out. We'll get to more of the details of that in a bit. A but great pass. Yeah. Ronnie Jones Perry, Stanford, not surprisingly, trying to grind it out. And then you see Danelle Parity Settler go down and we think get a pancake. But that's later challenged, okay? So after all of this, now we're going to challenge it. Because you think you won at this point. So when, when did you guys run over, well, over to Coach say, okay, well, it might not be over? It's always funny because when we come over and we talk, I'm like, was it up? Was it down? But don't, don't, don't say anything with your face or your mouth. And Danelle's always like with pancakes. Well, kind of hit my finger. I'm like, hey, it was down, Danelle. Okay. Yeah. It was down. So we knew, and uh, we were going to replay the point, and that's good. It gives you an opportunity to reset and say, hey, if they see it right, then we're going to do this again, and let's just get the next point. This uh, wasn't the first challenge in this match. There was uh, a few of them, and some at some very critical junctures, but you know, we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get to that as well. Okay, so Hambly, he wins this challenge. It's 24-22. Are nerves starting to creep in at this point, Mary? I mean, okay, nerves happen not during the play, but a little bit before. <laughs> and then as soon as the whistle blows, it's like they're done. So when you're in it, it's just a point. But definitely, I mean, you had the anticipation and excitement of just having it over with and winning two points ago. So it's a little jittery. Okay. Yeah. No, and, and, and it, we appreciate the honesty because everybody wants to know what it's like to play in that, in that moment. But here you are, 24-22, trying to close it out. Was there any doubt that you were going right back no, to Ronnie Jones Perry? There was no doubt where Lindy was setting the ball. Was no, was no <laughs> I knew where she was going. Send the whole gym knew where she was going. Just send it back to RJP and boom, so set great. one. So awesome. Yeah. Close it out. Okay, Kennedy, in that moment, what are you thinking? You just you just knocked off Stanford one set in that all-important first set. What's happening? Yeah, just going right back at it because I think, like I talked about earlier, when we came out, it was like, okay, we can do this. And so it was exciting just being able to start the set over and but coming in with that same focus, like we can do this. BYU up one set to none on the number one team in America, Stanford, late August 2018. We're going to take our first break on this BYU Sports Nation play-by-replay special. Coming back with set two and some of these volleyball greats. Stay with us. BYU play-by-replay is presented by Deseret First Credit Union. You know why, we show how. And Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. What a night, August 31st, 2018. One of the greatest wins in the long and storied history of the Smithfield House. We are remembering BYU women's volleyball and Stanford, a top 10 showdown late in 2018. We're with Heather Olmstead, Kennedy Eschenberg, and Mary Lake. We just went through set one. You hold on, 25-22, but now you're ready to take a stranglehold on this match. It's 8-5 in set number two, and you've got Ronnie Jones-Perry in beast mode, coach. What Did you know? Like, well, Did she have a look in her eye? Oh, yeah, she had the fire in her eye. We all could see it. When she gets in the, the zone, which was pretty much every match, this whole season it was it was beautiful to see and she worked hard to get in that position and she just didn't look back it was it's cool you, you know it when you see it especially the girls she follows that up with an ace Kennedy what's it like to be next to Ronnie Jones Perry when she's in that mode it's just amazing and you just play better too and she's always just like let's go let's go and you're like let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah you so lift you lift the emotions of your entire team okay I want you to pay attention uh, as we continue to watch this BYU run, to the absolute joy on your coach's face 
I believe it's right after this point, too. Just an incredible rally. RJP doing some defensive work right there. There's Mary. We'll ask you about how your face and arms felt after this. <laughs> but a just long rally. the wherewithal to stick it out. This is one of the top points of the match. Catherine Plummer goes long, and now watch your coach. Okay, so there's joy there. And Q there we go. You know why? That was we go. some of the best defense I've ever seen Ronnie Jones Perry play in her life. And I, we were pretty excited about it. I've never seen her play defense like she was. I'm pretty sure I was encouraging her after that point. And uh, it was pretty cool. That's the type of content that I'm here for, okay? <laughs> she knows it. We talked about it after the match. She knew she was in the zone, and uh, she'd never played defense like that. She had also crossed over 1,000 kills for her career in this match. Uh, and so, I mean, she, it was her night. Absolutely. And I don't even know if she knew she was creeping up on that, but good for her. Okay, a couple of exchange service errors. And, Mary, we're going to see a, a graphic, if we haven't already seen it, about your digs per set. But you're the all-time career leader in digs at BYU. What does that mark mean to you? Um, I would just say it's so... It's really nice knowing, like, I'm still with BYU even after I leave, not even for any sort of recognition. I just, like, want to be a part of the program as long as I can. And so to feel like I'm still there is a nice feeling. But it'll probably be passed up in <laughs> four years by Maddie Allen. She's amazing. <laughs> but honestly, like, I don't think it really means that much because I played a lot of volleyball. But it's just really nice knowing, like, oh, I'm with this program that I miss and love. You also hold the record for number of bruises on your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I just bruise easily, but... <laughs> it's 14-6. to I And mean, you are taking it to Stanford right now. What was the key to build this type of lead and carry that momentum from set one to set two? Yeah, we were definitely serving well, getting them in some trouble. And our block, our defense, you can see how scrappy Lindy just had a great tip there. Mary was playing great defense. I mean, it wasn't just Ronnie. It was like there's a great up by Lindy right there. And, you know, we were turning these digs to, to kills for points, and, and it was just a lot of good things going on, you know, forcing some errors there. Our block was in good spots. You know, Mary was back there frustrating them. And, and so a lot of good things by us executing the game plan for sure. Plus nine at 15-6 at any point. And I'll direct this question to you, Kennedy. Did you expect to be up nine points on Stanford in a set? I came into this game expecting just a battle the whole time. And so, yeah, this was kind of like, whoa, we're up by a lot. But at the same time, Heather does a good job and all the coaches just, and even all the players just like, don't focus on the score and just focus on what we need to do next. And I think that helps us get to this point in a game. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit and look at this team as a whole. At what point, Mary, did you realize in the 2018 season, we, we may have something very special here? I think I realized not even in the – I think I realized the spring before just not necessarily how good we were, but we were just really good at working hard and we were really balanced. And I remember – just how fast we gelled because it kind of takes normally a while for a team to gel and to click, but it happened pretty fast. And you kind of in the moment don't realize that how special it is. But I remember at that time being thinking to myself, wow, like things are working out really well. Okay. And I'll ask you the same question, Kennedy. When did you feel like, oh, okay, this, this group's next level? Yeah, I think kind of what Mary was saying, but at the end of spring, it just had a different feel because usually you come together and you've got new players like it's a new team but this team felt very like comfortable and well gelled like Mary said and, and it was played for three years together it yeah yeah and it's just exciting to think we have all summer to work and then get back together in the fall well we start to see some of that maturity pay off here uh, at the end of set number two so we already profiled you being up plus nine fifteen six to Stanford's credit and, and they're going to do this because they're Stanford. They bounce back within four late in set two. But here comes the twin sister connection, but they have different last names, only at BYU, right? Okay. Uh, and Lacey Haddock, who, whose role kind of 
shifted uh, in and out of this season uh, to where she was playing a lot and then a little and a lot, but um, she was she came up with a big kill right here. Yeah, she came off the bench in this match, and she she was the I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything you want me to do type of player, and we needed her to come in and play some right side this match, and you can see her getting a good touch there. She just really was willing to do whatever we needed, um, and she had great energy, and it was really neat to see her come in and step up in this match. We'll just skip right over that miss right there, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I was looking, I was zoning out. I was just thinking about that play. I just showed up. I'm like, crap. <laughs> Whose responsibility was that? We're not going to. Oh, good. It doesn't matter. That. You're still up four, 22-18. <laughs> okay, and then, again, 5-11, Lacey Haddock coming so up nice. big at the end of set two, along with Ronnie Jones-Perry. And she's doing this against a... A block of 6-4 and 6-3. She's 5-11. Yeah, she's using that block well. We love when they're, they chisel around high hands and, and use the edges of the block there. And she, she was good at doing that. She knew that's what she needed to do. All right, 23-18 as we look at uh, Lacey Haddock. And now Mary Lake comes back oh. in with a big dig right there. <laughs> You can add that to the record tally she now holds, even though you've already pinpointed who you think is going to break your record. Just enjoy it for now. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry about that. Stanford scores uh, again within four, but here's another replay of that dig. I mean, how do you feel it in the moment? Does it hurt or does it not hurt no, until later? I don't even, honestly, I think I was so used to it from being young and just, I didn't feel anything. To me, playing kickball hurt more than diving on the ground, honestly. Oh. You just get used to it and, yeah. That's uh, pretty remarkable stuff. <laughs> yeah, here's more defense. And, Coach, you pointed out the defense in the first two sets was just Yeah, it was incredible. Incredible. What a great swing by McKenna right there and started with a really good pass. Um, everybody was just doing their job. It was really, really cool to see and special. Everyone doing their job, playing together, looking towards each other, giving each other credit where credit is due, and it was just really cool. McKenna Miller, MC Hammer, that uh, was – I was, I was – Contracted to say that by her family uh, again. Uh, the shark clap is back out. You smell blood in the water. And for those who don't know, I mean, this that goes all the way back to the late 90s. I mean, that clap has been around for a long time. And the funny part is later in the year when you hosted Florida in the Sweet 16, they're the Gators, and their fans were super confused when you would get to a set point because they're like, are they doing the Gator chop? Like, why, why are they doing this? I think the parents were really mad. And they're like, we're, we're nice. <laughs> we're, not, we're not trying to throw shade. Yeah. 24-20, you're in a position to put Stanford in a very rare circumstance. And how about the Bick to do it? Uh, just the back row attack. We see this a ton in the men's game. But, again, Ronnie gives you that capability. Yeah, Ronnie Jones-Perry with her thousandth kill. I mean, what a kill. And Mary set it up with a great pass, a smart set by Lindy, and she just took advantage. So nice. Okay, two sets to none advantage. The challenge, especially for you, Coach, is – to not relax because you're in the best position possible at that point. But there is this tendency to, okay, we can breathe a little bit. But you're like, no, 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 we can't breathe. we we got to keep the pedal to the metal. So how do you manage that situation? Yeah, there's never a situation until the match is over where you feel comfortable because you're playing the number one team in Stanford, you know, multi-time national champs with a great coach and great players. So we're just focused on, hey, heading into the third set, executing, knowing that they were going to make adjustments. They had to do something different because it wasn't working, and they're a great team. So we talked about that. We just wanted to, to control what we could control, keep playing well, and see what happened. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason you're here. Yeah. That is for sure. There's a reason you're here. Okay, we'll take another break. It is our BYU Sports Nation play-by-replay. BYU up two sets to none on the number one team in America. We're coming back with the very exciting finish in just a few moments. Back on our BYU Sports Nation play-by-replay top ten matchup between BYU and Stanford late August 2018. The Cougars, if you've been following the program up to this point, up two sets to none and have really put the Cardinal in uh, an unusual situation, rarely are the multi-time national champions and a team with four All-Americans returning down two sets to none. But here they are, forced to dig deep and, and really try and get out of an uncomfortable situation. Uh, Coach, you've been in that situation. So knowing Kevin Hambly, what, what kind of things do you imagine he was telling his team in this moment? I think he was probably telling them to stick with it and keep serving tough, keep taking their tough swings that they do and – Things were going to turn is probably what he was saying. Okay, so for you two, you need one more set. 
I mean, you could potentially sweep Stanford. Like, what in the world? So how are you handling all of this mentally with the two sets to none lead? Just staying in the present. <laughs> and it's a lot easier when you're just focusing on one point at a time, which is easier said than done when you're playing a team like Stanford and you're up 2-0. But we get drilled in us to stay in the present. So at this point, it's like, this is what we do. We don't get ahead of ourselves. We don't start thinking we're better than we are. We just get to work. How much do you notice the crowd in a situation like this? It's crazy you don't notice it at all. But because I'm a middle, I like come off when I'm in the back row, and sometimes I'm like getting a drink or something, and then I, I like see the crowd. I'm like, whoa, there's a ton of people, <laughs> and then it's kind of like it doesn't matter. Just like focus on the game. <laughs> but it's crazy. Like you, when you're playing, you don't really notice it. Yeah, you don't notice until you can't hear yourself, and then you're like, wait, why can't I hear or myself? Dave is telling That's me something. That's when I notice it. Yeah. Yeah. Dave like sometimes tells me something, and I'm like, what? And he's like. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, the place going, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> At You're least like, you have an excuse. Like, oh, okay, coach. Yeah. All right. Why didn't you listen to me? I couldn't hear you. I have no idea what's going on. Okay, set three. Uh, again, BYU leading two sets to none. And like we've already talked about, this is a veteran, experienced, very talented group on the Stanford side. You know they're going to dig deep. It's 22-19. And... They know, and volleyball is unlike any other sport. You win one set, even if you're down two sets to none, is incredible the shift of momentum that can happen. Yeah, it's all about who makes plays and executes plays. So they were executing at a little bit higher level than we were at this point. We still liked the way we were playing. We were doing a really, really good things. We were still doing our game plan. We just we kind of had a few more errors than we did the first two sets, and, and Stanford cut down on their errors. Mary, you just said there was a touch on that. I don't remember if it was. It, it might have been another point. I remember a point where there was a big touch. I didn't mean, challenge it? I don't, I don't know. Oh. I think you challenged it, and they didn't see it. And oh. you kind of were like, oh, that might have been, not been that point. Oh, yes. We, we will have our conversation about the challenges. You don't want to go against Coach Olsen. Right? I learned that the hard way. Yeah, One time I was good. like, oh, I don't know about that challenge. And then uh, you won it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, it's, the girls tell me when to challenge. I just sit there, and they tell me. So it's pretty easy. The best is when you tell Heather, like, you're like, sure. And no one really believes you, but you and Heather believe each other. Yeah. And then it's, right? I, it's and then it's bonding. I, I could always count on Mary. We were, we were connected that way. <laughs> Jenna Gray, meanwhile, uh, as we watch another McKenna Miller kill, loses a contact. And in this match, you're just going to find it on the floor and pop it back in. Can't imagine that feels good. But, like, that, that's the type of match this was. Like, no way she's coming off the floor. Gosh. I didn't remember that. That sucks. 23-20. Okay, whistle blows. McKenna has uh, the go-ahead to serve. And then, once again, RJP with some solo defense. So nice. Yeah, so she nice. was in the zone not only offensively, defensively digging, but her block was on fire. And we'll see that again later in the, the match. But she just she was in good spots, reaching over, getting in their face. And she worked hard to get better at blocking her whole career. It was nice to see it paying off in this match and the whole year. Kennedy, you're a middle blocker. Is there anything better than a solo stuff? No, that's the best feeling. And I remember Ronnie, she'd always say, that's my bet. That's my favorite thing is getting a block. And it's like crazy because Ronnie hits the ball so hard. I'm like, that one must feel good. But she's like, no, just a block is my favorite thing. <laughs> and defending behind her, I, you don't realize how pampered you are left side when Ronnie's your blocker. And then, and you, like, it's just out of this world blocking and it helps you so much. So, yeah. Okay, so in spite of how good Ronnie was here, she goes off the block and is dug there. Mary, you're up to get another dig. You're going to make the Cardinal work really hard for this on set point. And they eventually get it done, but not after a really extensive rally. I mean, this is just high-level volleyball happening. Crazy. Okay, so they set up Plummer one more time, and there's set three. Okay, so you don't want panic to set in, but maybe you realize, okay, now we're we're in for a battle now. Well, we knew we were in for a battle the whole match, so we, we expected it. We, Again, we were playing well. There's not much we needed to change. We just needed to clean up some things, and we, we were having a good time. Yeah. It was, it was fun. fun. Okay, was so fun. You, again, you're able to step back, and how do you not let the pressure creep in, though? Because fans definitely feel it. I mean, they're, they're not, we weren't. I don't know. We weren't expected to win. We were playing Stanford, the number one. We were, we were just challenging ourselves yeah. to see how good we could be that match. And it was our fourth match of the year. Like, there were no expectations. And we just wanted to see how good we could be against a really good team. 
and it was fun. Yeah. Even after some points, I remember after we didn't get them, I'd look around and I'd be like, "That was awesome!" Like, congrat, like not congratulating, but just acknowledging people for the good things they did in the rally. And that's how you know you're having fun and you're mm -hmm. playing good volleyball. Is even if you don't get the point, it's like just being able to appreciate the volleyball was really awesome in this game. What is the sportsmanship like and the camaraderie between opposing teams in a match like this? Because you celebrate so hard with your team and it's set up to do so, but what, how much really inter interaction do you have with the other teams during this? I, you like notice each other and I think like it's more energy with each team and each side wanted to win so much. And I, um, I know like Megan McClure on their team and Fitz and they just talked about how like awesome it was to come and play in the Smithfield house but how fun it was to play against us too and how much respect we like they knew we had for them but they had for us too and I think that was a big part of the game is like they would do something amazing and it was like that was awesome but then they could say the same for us very that, cool that's it those are the teams you like playing yeah. even even if we know how good they are and we've played them a lot it's like I have respect for that team and I know they have it for us and as players I like them more than like just a team who's good and humble, they kind of remind me of us in that uh -huh. way. And I, yeah. I like playing them because, and I kind of hope them the best because they're good people. So you like the the good and humble teams because that's what you're good and humble, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, my our team. I'm kidding, oh I'm my kidding. god! Invite me to one of these next time. I'm not showing up. Mary. It's always happens. We love we love Mary Lake. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. I'm just giving you a hard time. All yeah, right. I'm just kidding. You. <laughs> on this, on the set number four, and uh, situation is the same for Stanford. Back against, well, they have to win, or they're going to take the loss on the road. And again, they're here with a late lead, 22-18. What a huge swing from McKenna. Yeah, she had some fire there. Yeah. Hey, what's going on in your mind now, Coach? <laughs> because you're oh, you're boy. on the verge of going to that always yeah. exciting fifth set. I think. Gosh, it's it's this more of the same, and it's a scrappy play by both sides. Obviously, McKenna just brought the heat there, and we're just looking to do whatever we can to keep scrapping for every point. And Sid with a, a great serve, and you know they they won that point. But you can kind of feel things getting a little bit tense. You can feel, you know, maybe some minds wandering. What happens? What if? But we were really just staying in the present, excited to be there, and. You never think it's over till it's over. So we, we're thinking, hey, we can still win this set. We can still win this set. Yeah, how frustrating is that? Because you get a great serve, the overpass, and then they still win the point. Like it's, that's one of those that has to drive you crazy a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, just <laughs> it, 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 it's, tough, yeah, it's, not, it's tough. They practice all the time, but sometimes if a setter's front row, it's tough. you got to know, and you got to kind of go high instead of down. And so they, they made a great play there by their setter. Okay, another set point for Stanford. They're... Uh, one point away from tying this thing, thing up uh, two sets apiece. What's the level of urgency on the floor right now, Mary? It feels urgent. Like, <laughs> I would be lying if it didn't, you know, because you're all thinking about that fifth set. And... Great pass, though, right there. Thank you. It's very nice. <laughs> 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 I'm really nice passes. That's yeah, the mind just when goes I'm, to the passes. When I'm urgent, when it's the end of the set, that's when serve-receive is kind of a mind game. But that's when I think I pass my best because I just have to. So in those moments, it's kind of like that's how you feel is you're nervous, but that's when your senses are heightened and you're yeah. playing good volleyball. There's something to be said about that mental toughness. Not everybody wants that position, right? Not everybody wants that moment. But uh, I mean, I think every I think every position. Like, that's what's awesome playing with Mary is you know, like in those big moments, she always like you don't even worry about it, and it's <laughs> cool to be able to depend on that. That's really nice. May 24-20 and. There's Mary and Number Sydney six. coming up big. Just keep it alive. I mean, you want to live to play at least one more point, and Stanford swing. makes a great swing. Yeah. Correct. So uh, that ends it. Two sets apiece. We're going to the fifth. Let's do it. Oh, why am I nervous? <laughs> <laughs> I know what happens. Kennedy took off her jacket last night. She's like, things, <laughs> things are, things are gonna, they're heating <laughs> up, you know. <laughs> we got to right. cool off here in uh, the production control room. <laughs> um, but... We're going to spend a lot of time on this fifth set because it is loaded with uh, little nitty-gritty details that we want to get into. And uh, you're not going anywhere at this point. It's two sets to two in one of the all-time matches. Keep it here on BYU Sports Nation's play-by-replay, Stanford and BYU Top Ten Showdown. 
BYU Play by Replay is presented by Brady Industries, Honestly Better, and Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation Play by Replay is go for launch as we prepare for set number five. BYU and Stanford tied at two sets apiece. It has been an epic showdown to this point, and you have to wonder, as we welcome back in Coach Heather Olmstead, Kennedy Eschenberg, and Mary Lake, what kind of uh, fatigue is setting in? How how are you feeling at this point physically after expending so much energy in this match? Yeah, I think going into a fifth set, just a lot of times, especially this game, so much adrenaline kicks in, and you don't really feel the fatigue, I think, after it kicks in, but, like, at this point, it's just, like... Not even until, like, two hours after. Like, I'm still amped. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's hard to go to bed sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I was feeling great, but it was, uh, was great. It was pretty exciting. The yeah. Adrenaline was definitely pumping, and I- I'm not running all over the court, but I knew that they were ready for it. Yeah. yeah. It's first to 15, so how is the approach different in a set like this compared to the normal first to 25 set? Yeah, we don't talk about it except we understand that this is it. You know, you don't have another opportunity, win or lose, uh, to play another set. So we we don't really do anything different in our huddles. We talk about what we want to do, what we're doing well, and how we can maybe make one or two adjustments and go from there. All right, let's get to uh, the fifth set. And uh, we've been teasing this for a little while, but we get to one of the bigger or, I guess, controversial situations in this match where McKenna Miller is called into the net, and it's 4-4. I mean, this is a critical swing point after a long, lengthy round. This is one of those moments, Mary, you're talking about where you're like, whoa, this is awesome volleyball. Yeah. But McKenna, the look on her face says it all. Like, I, how did you call that on me? She turned to me, and she's like, Heather, I did not touch the net. And I'm like, I'm challenging. That look on McKenna's face was just deadly. So, Another dig by Mary Lake. It's been said that 70% of the earth is covered by water. Yeah. The other 30% is covered by Mary Lake. Okay. Yeah, great pancake. It's been said. Great ups. <laughs> but here we are challenging, and uh, you, you were very quick there. So, I mean, it, did it only take McKenna's reaction for you to know, like, I well, need to challenge first this? first of all, it's a back row setter, so I thought we should win the point because the setter's back row, McKenna hits it. It's, it's clearly on the net. You can see on the net cam that the ball's on the net right here. Um, where, where it shows it again. And so it should be a back row setter. So when they called McKenna in the net, and she – so it's coming over on our side. It's cleared the net. If any point of the bar, ball clears the net, you're allowed to attack it, and she's not allowed to touch it as a setter being back row. So as soon as she told me I didn't touch the net, Heather, I knew. I was going to challenge. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what they were going to say, if they could see it, but I, I knew something needed to be done, and so I did what I could. She was not even close to that net. Yeah, that, that's, and, and, and the, doing the broadcast, I mean, the conversation we're having on the air at this point is we just can't see anything that would indicate that McKenna was into the net. But are you, are you going crazy right now? Are you, you want to play, but you want him to get it right. Yeah. So right here we're talking about, I think, the last movie we saw or songs we liked or <laughs> no we were we were talking about the game we were, you could tell look at ronnie she's intense she's into it and we were we did, again you never know which way it's going to go uh even when you're absolutely sure it's just really you have to prepare okay if we get this point who's serving if we have to side out what row are we in so we're preparing for both scenarios in that huddle when we're talking so we're ready for whatever happens and we're not reacting to the good or the bad call we're just next point let's go and so we talk about it a lot, you know, let's, let's not over-celebrate, let's be grateful, you know, if, if we get the, the call right, and, and let's go to work. And it's interesting, I didn't even realize Heather does that strategically. She, like, what? tells you both, well, I, she tells you both routes that it could take, and it yeah. prepares you mentally without thinking that they're trying to prepare you mentally for either outcome. That's it's like, true. it gets you ready. Well, they get it right. They switch it back. Advantage, Heather, not surprisingly. I mean, your win percentage at BYU is like 900. I think you've got a better win percentage on challenges. It's Mary Lake, McKenna, Ronnie, Kennedy. They all tell me what to do. I don't, I just, they just tell me. I touched it. I didn't touch it. I mean, I can see things from my perspective and our staff talks before we challenge, but really we lean on the girls. Well, you you leaned on them there and now you have a lead at 5-4. What kind of difference does that one point make, Mary? I mean, in the fifth set, we talk about how every point of every game is really precious, but in the fifth set, you feel 
how precious every point is. And not that that's a relieved feeling when you win that challenge like that, but when you work for a point, it's like, these are so precious, we should be getting the right calls. And so in a moment like that, you're like, okay, we worked for that point, we should be getting that point, and we did. And it just kind of brings your hope up and gives you more momentum. So it's precious. Yeah, it, it really was a swing point because there you take that, the crowd's in it, the momentum's back, and you start to kind of inch away from Stanford in the fifth set, Kennedy. Yeah. So what do you think it was that allowed you to take that momentum from that point and, and finally finish it off? I think just keep with our game plan, keep focusing on what we need to do every point and just really focus and energy and trust each other too. And I think that was like a big thing is just we trusted the coaches, we trusted everyone on the court, and that's just like – and we were just going to give our best effort, like, no matter what happened, but we believed that we could win. All right, let's relive it. Let's, uh, yeah, watch the video. We've been doing this the whole time so that we can get to this point. Uh, you're up 10-8 late in set five. and That's huge. Lindy right there helping on that. I mean, just big deal. such big-time volleyball. RJP throws it down. Yeah, What's I the see, atmosphere like on the bench for you and your assistants right now? Yeah, Coach? it's huge. And when you see Lindy helping on the gap, I mean, those are things we see right here. It was actually an inside set. So she was able to see the setter coming inside, trying to kind of play some tricks on us. Then you know your team's got the other team figured out because Lindy didn't get, didn't get tricked at all. And then Ronnie, us getting the dig to the kill was huge. Okay, aggressive service continues. It goes as an error. So BYU is still up to 11-9. Four points away. You talked about how precious these points and these moments are, Mary. But, Kennedy, as you pointed out, this is where you trust a player like Mary the most. Yeah. Uh, and why is that? What have you seen from her over time to make you feel like, no, nah, she's got it? Just playing with her for, I think this is my second year playing with her, day in and day out, even on practices, like, she always gives her best effort and she always like comes through and so it's just like <laughs> even at this point it's kind of like we just each need to do our job so it's awesome well there's the luxury of having uh, ronnie jones perry as the blocker in front of you again that Mary. is the most beautiful volleyball play <laughs> that. Uh, you can see ronnie she's was, fired up i was zoned out it was so cool just in her eyes too. this is your love language mary oh it's the blocks <laughs> when i'm digging left side 12-9 and, I mean, the atmosphere and the intensity that's palpable in the Smithfield oh, house right now. Key. Everybody was ready. Key was going in the whole match, serving tough serves. And that's a great dig right there, a little off-speed roll shot where she, she read it and picked it up for a point. I mean, that's huge. Huge. I'm glad you brought up Kenny Moyai because, again, role player, yeah. but just a deadly server. Yeah. And for her to come in at this juncture and do that is pretty remarkable. Yeah, we had Sid coming in, serving tough balls, Donnell, Kiani. I mean, everyone was doing their job. Everyone was ready. If their number was going to get called anywhere on our team, they were going to be ready to go. 13-9. to nine. I know you felt good about wins, two wins against Duke earlier on the road that season, but, I mean... At this point, can you enjoy it? I mean, are you close enough that you can enjoy it, or are you just are you still so focused on closing out the final enjoy two it right points? Now? Yeah. No, what the heck? What no, are you I'm talking just saying, about? Can are you in, are you experiencing the atmosphere at all, or are you just like, no, I'm not even until we get that 15th point. Like, I'm not I'm not going to buy into this. Um, I think you, the whole match, are appreciating the atmosphere, but you do that when like you're off high fiving teammates and you notice for a second, but. All business. I don't even yeah, think yeah. we celebrated that win until after we we had to play a team the next day, and we wanted to win that. And so I personally like didn't cel didn't feel like I celebrated yeah. until we won. Yeah. And then after we won that game, I was like crying because I was like <laughs> so I was like okay, I can let out emotion. But like I, I enjoyed it because th that this match was the beginning of for me of the feeling in the Smithfield House of that year of how special it was. Like, I got chills a couple times. I got, like, a little emotional where you're like, don't cry, don't cry. Like, it, it was just, like, really cool to see the community coming out supporting this team. And we really hadn't done anything yet uh, that year. And, and, and then they came back the next home match, which was really special. And so I, I felt it in the match, but I was still focused because you didn't know what was going to happen. But win or lose, the support we got from the community and the crowd and and our fans was was special. Okay, I, I almost feel bad doing this, but we're, we're going to go to another break. We're going to make you wait for the final two right. points. Okay, and the final point, I know you all remember it very well, is one that uh, volleyball fans won't soon forget. Holy cow. The play-by-replay continues next. BYU Sports Nation, it's BYU and Stanford. 
It is the BYU Sports Nation play-by replay special of BYU Women's Volleyball Top 10 Showdown 2018. Number one, Stanford and the Smith Fieldhouse. The Cougars won the first two sets. The Cardinal won the next two sets. And here we are, BYU just two points away from closing out what would be one of the most remarkable wins in BYU Women's Volleyball history. But again, as we just talked about, you can't really enjoy that yet. You got, you got to close things out. You want, you want to get to that point of relief. And so here we go. Very entertaining and controversial finish to this game until we show you all of the wonderful angles that BYU TV provides. Stanford able to score here to make it 13-10. And coach, okay, at this point it's just encouragement, right? Yeah, I'm wondering, do I really have two timeouts left? That's what it's saying. Apparently. I don't know. We were playing well. We were feeling good. So I'm not quite sure. Uh, we, we definitely were feeling good. Looks like I have two time out left. And we were just in the zone here trying to side out, telling, hey, let's get a good pass. Good enough pass from Donnell right there. And what a tip by Ronnie. Now, now you're at a match point. It's 14-10. Yeah. Kendi, you're, 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 yeah, you're, you're, both, you're both up and out of your seat right now. What? Why yeah. is that? What's happening? The emotions and the excitement and also some of just, like, the jittery. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's almost more when you're in it, it's like, let's do this. But then watching it, it's like, ooh. Yeah, as a fan, <laughs> it's, like, way more stressful. I love it. Everybody on their feet in the Smithfield house. They know what this means. But Catherine Plummer, again, what, just like you knew BYU was going to go to Ronnie Jones Perry, yeah, no surprise going they're going there. to Catherine Plummer. Yeah, they were going to go to her. And um, obviously, we everyone knew where we were going to go. And, and it was just a great battle. 14-11, second match point. We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Are we? Are we? Oh, yeah. Okay, another back set. And what a dig right there. Plumber. And now we have the point to BYU. So it's finished. Yes, celebrate. It's on. <laughs> but there is, <laughs> there is a, a clear... Uh, close call that's happening right here and so the officials are talking so you have like this delay so what now <sighs> yeah no one really knew what was going on but I, we didn't I didn't know what what was going on until they made a call and that was after he went over and talked about what the call was going to be uh, so I was trying to get a, a read on asking Ronnie what happened what happened you know did you touch the ball um, did it just go out of bounds you know we knew she touched it so yeah we weren't quite sure until he made the f official call, and then they challenged what, what was going on. And that took a while to even get to. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and, and, and we're going to walk you through all of it, agonizingly walk you through all of this, um, because it was clear that Ronnie did touch the ball. Yeah, And but uh, something touched the antenna. Yes, I'm, so. ca I'm calling the match with Amy Gant, and we're, everyone's so focused on the ball and the net and where the players were, but nobody's looking at... The antenna, and you see the pinky of <laughs> Catherine Plummer come over and just barely graze that antenna, and that's a no-no. That's a clear call. Okay, so so now he challenges us. I think him and I are talking, kind of laughing, like this is just hilarious that this is happening. So him and I were kind of talking while they're watching it. Look at just we're just having a good time. Who knows what's going on? I have no clue what he's Did judging. I, yeah. yeah. I, I There's some lip sure. reading. Yeah. I, no, I have no clue I what no they're judging. But I knew it was just like it was just. It just felt, as, for int as intense as it was, it also felt light and yeah. just confident. We, we were confident in ourselves. And I kept asking Ronnie, what happened? Did you touch it? And she kind of didn't know either. She knew she touched the ball, um, but she knew that she didn't touch the antenna. So I had no idea what happened. I really thought we didn't get that point. Yeah. I really thought... I just didn't see what happened. Even after the, it ended, I thought we just got the point from a bad call. Yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't realize until the replay, I was like, oh, she definitely hit the antenna, That's which sucks. That stinks for her. But, but once we found out, we felt I good. I felt so good. <laughs> I was like, we deserve this. <laughs> okay, some dancing in the huddle. And I know you're trying to re uh, maintain some type of normalcy there, but how can you? Like, it's yeah, the it game the deciding thing. point. If you win it, you win. If you lose the point, you have to side out. So yeah. you have to keep your focus and you're you're like did we win did we not win did we just beat the number one team are yeah. we gonna it was just it was just yeah. hilarious kind of like it was hard not to laugh but we were yeah we were just in it to win it so we were whatever happens we're gonna move forward do you give another one of those scenarios okay well if the call goes against oh, us yeah. then we were definitely ready if we needed to side out you know replay whatever was gonna happen we talked about every possible scenario um i don't i don't think we talked you know, 
matter of factly like, hey, we're gonna, we won this, it's over. Never, because you just never know. And had she not touched the antenna, they would have sighted out. That was yeah. a great swing off Ronnie's hand. But uh, unfortunately, you know, she, she touched that with her pinky and it was point cougars. Yeah, so I... <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? Hey, Kenneth, you and Mary were laughing as some of your teammates ran on the floor and then they slowly yeah. backpedal yeah. off. Everyone thought we won, so we were just like, woo! And then it was like, wait. And I, Emily's like, back. Can we <laughs> talk about that moment where they just realized it's funny? Well, and this is an extremely long challenge because it's at such a critical juncture. I think it was six or seven minutes, they said. It's one of the longest challenges of the year over the whole country. And th this is the angle where we're like, oh, her yeah. pinky hits the antenna. And c credit to the refs for getting that right and, yeah, and using it. every possible angle and BYU TV as well for providing these. You know, Normally, you just have these stationary cameras to go off of, but we're able to have this BYU TV footage, and that, that could have made the difference. Being able to have that angle right there that w those refs can review could have sealed the deal for us, so... That's huge for us to, to have that opportunity for BYU TV to provide that. Thank you for the plug. And we, will take, we will take all of the credit. It's, it's all That's true. Funny. You're That's welcome. A big deal. You're welcome, Heather and Kennedy and Mary, for <laughs> providing the conclusive oh, yeah. angles at the end of this match. Uh, was it anticlimactic at all? I mean, did, did, it, did it make it any less sweet that it had to be this way after a very long delay, or was, or was it okay? I don't think no. it made it any less sweet. It was kind of a weird, like, <laughs> and then it's like, woo, but it was just as good. It looks like you would way rather have this just as a sport. It's, you're not like, give them the point. We'll do another one. It's like, no. you want to win, you know? So. Yeah, that's why there was immediate closure for you, right, Heather? Like, yeah. no, uh, they called it, it's over, we're done. Yeah, I, I mean, I knew we'd won when, when, when the final whistle was blown and that we earned every single point that we got, and that's what's so <laughs> sweet about it. Team's just so excited right there, and it, it was just, everyone was in it. <laughs> You're still waiting for the confirmation. And even now, we know what's coming, but it's like, can you just make the call already? Can you, can you just them. confirm us? I'm reminded a little bit of uh, a football game in 2019 that BYU had against USC where there's an interception to end the game, but they got to go back and review it. And then they finally, and now they give you the point. There okay? we go. So the, the, the real celebration is on. Mary, what, are you feeling more joy or relief at this point? Oh, every time after we win, it's really joyful. Yeah. But, like, when you give so much, and I get really nervous for games. That's how I, like, get in the zone. But it takes a toll on a yeah. person. So when it's over, it's like, wow, all that we just did, I'm done. And I can just enjoy all that we just did. Yeah. How, what is it to play in front of fans and a crowd in a game like that, Kennedy? So crazy. Just the best feeling ever. And I think going and playing other places, you realize how special this place really is. And after the game, you really can, like, take it oh in gosh. and just realize how so magical. It is. What do you remember about the post-match after that final whistle, Coach? Yeah, I, I remember going up to the team room with our team and just really celebrating. And we knew we had a match the next day, but we really wanted to talk about what the things we did well that match and really savor it. I think we talked about writing it in our journals and really thanking – the crowd for showing up and, and being grateful and just you, those are the mem memories you never want to forget and you never will it's because of the experiences you had with your teammates and coaches that make it special and seeing people's faces again that we haven't seen in a couple of years I mean it just brings back a lot of good memories was there some celebratory diet coke that night coach oh yeah I think <laughs> I think it was definitely it was just a great moment for our program and the first win over the number one team since 2000, third ever over number one team. So for the program and these girls to be a part of history, like Mary said, she'll always have that. She'll be a part of this team and that win forever. And it's just really cool for them because they put in the hard work and they deserve it. And it, it really propelled us through the rest of the season. Yeah, what, what did this do, Kennedy, for the in terms of launching you towards greater things this season? Yeah, I think... We had that belief that we could do amazing things, but this really, like, we can hang with the best of the best teams and win those games and just showed us, like, our potential and what we could do. Yeah, it's one thing to go five sets. It's another to win a game like yeah. this yeah. in five sets. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you for coming in. This was, a, this was a lot of fun. Thank you. So long awesome. replays, long, uh, I guess, uh, looking back at that final point, you know, you got to get it right, but they got it right. And uh, this was, it was a great opportunity to talk to you about this game again. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Okay, for the great Heather Olmstead and uh, your win percentage, I'm, I was serious when I said it's like 900. So you keep that going. 
Uh, Kennedy, Mary, fantastic. Thanks for being here again. Thank you, guys. All right, that is the BYU Sports Nation play-by-replay. BYU takes down Stanford on August 31st, 2018 in five sets. Oh, yes, rejoice. And it felt like there were 10,000 people in that building. Until next time, it's another Cougar winner.